us for a million dollars one day, or maybe like 1.2 million. And then you get all that rent money too. So when I say I'm investing in my career, I say I'm like I'm putting time into like making videos and doing content creation and like hoping it turns into something. Like because I'm on SSDI, nobody expects me to do anything, right? And like, I don't have to, I feel in like a way. Um, I mean, like obviously you should have a hobby and a full life, but nobody expects me to do like work activities. Um, but like, uh, I'm a workaholic just because I have a disability doesn't mean I'm not a workaholic. <laughs> so, uh, and, um, you know, um, so, um, I'm, you know, I have like 150 videos of me doing stand up comedy and I'm hoping it turns into like, you know, a gig in comedy central someday, or like, uh, I'm writing all these, I wrote 41 articles for thought catalog for free. I'm hoping it turns into a salary at the New York times someday, you know, or, um, I I've drawn like hundreds of comics. Um, I hope it turns into like, um, my own comic strip someday and like the, the paper or like, um, a comic salary from the New Yorker, you know, or like a gig, I guess, <laughs> you know, or, um, yeah, I did take my time to be on TV and like, I, I even bought a new outfit sometimes to do a virtual studio audience. I'm hoping it turns into like a paid gig on TV someday. So I'm investing my time, a little bit of the money, um, to do that. And, um, like I was telling my, <laughs> I was telling my parents that only one percent of writers get paid. Actually, like a lot of people are writing for free, and uh, which messes up the writing economy, I guess. But people probably because of the internet love seeing their name in print and like showing the link and stuff. Like I, I want to get paid. <laughs> I mean, like I love writing and I do it for free, but like uh, my family isn't like that. But like I, you know, I should be paid. Otherwise, I, I was kind of taught they were kind of taking advantage of you if they don't pay you, in a way. Like, I don't feel that way about Thought Catalog, because it's one of the only places where you can really, like, get a foot in the door in the writing world. Like, there has to be at least one place where you can, like, get a foot in the door. Um, so it's, it's a nice, like, like, I value that they're there. Um, but, yeah. Have the earth going to that? Just a long way. Let's read a book. But did I do that math right? Let me just check my math. I think it's right. Okay. Oh, I, I was saying that, like, they only pay 1% of writers. I told my parents, I think I'm in the 100th percentile of writers, though. Like, I really believe in my writing skills. So, like, if I, if I, like, if I, if I was, like, oh, like, I'm a B English student, but I just like writing, and I like Sex in the City, and I want to be Sarah Jessica Parker, and I'm going to buy the clothes, and, like, move to New York City, and then, like, um start like dating people as a project and like, <laughs> write about it and um try to submit i wouldn't do that it's like every I've, i'm like a straight a plus student english student who like uh, just has the most glowing remarks on all of her papers english teachers have told me i'm, I'm the best english student in their careers i was the co-editor of my high school literary magazine like i wrote I was secretary for the Fed in um, at Columbia University. I wrote an underground newspaper that had like a following, like um, going to Bard College, really writing intensive, you know. Like, um, and I was doing well there. I was doing well um, in my religion classes. Is really writing intensive at Columbia and Barnard. Um, you know, if if I weren't like an Ivy League student who was like the best <laughs> I won an English award at a high school graduation you know like it's just I wouldn't I wouldn't do it if I didn't think I was in the hundredth percentile um 
but I think I am. So I'm, I'm just, it's like, yeah, if you're in the hundred percentile though, like how come you're not being paid yet? It's like, well, you know, there's, there's some red tape. You got to jump through some hoops, but like, I'm really, um, positive and positive that like, I think I will be paid someday for writing. Um, getting into thought catalog is really hard. Um, Like, um, they make it seem like a little bit effortless. Like a lot of the articles they accept are um, written kind of like effortlessly. Um, but like, it's extremely hard. It's extremely hard to get in there. Long slub Zarathustra, and not only the rosy dawn passed over his head, but also the morning. At last, however, his eyes opened and he, and amazingly, he gazed into the forest and the stillness. Amazingly, he gazed into himself. Then he arose quickly like the seafarer who all at once seized the land, and he shouted for joy, for he saw a new truth, and he spake thus to his heart. A light hath dawned upon me, I need companions, living ones, not dead companions and corpses, a little black humor, which I carry with me where I will. But I need living companions who will follow me, because they want to, ooh, this is exciting, it's going to be a forced dump run, because they want to follow themselves and to the place where I will. A light hath dawned upon me. Not to the people is, not to the people is Zarathustra to speak, but to companions. Ooh, he's gonna make a following. Zarathustra shall not be the herd's herdsman's pet hound, to allure many from the herd. For that purpose I have come. The people and the herd must be angry with me. A robber shall Zarathustra be called by the herdsmen. Herdsmen, I say, but they call themselves the just and good, the good and just. Herdsmen, I say, but they call themselves the believers in the orthodox belief. Behold the good and just. Oh, I know what I forgot. Here, I'll finish this. Behold the good and just. Whom do they hate most? Him who breaketh up their tables and values, the breaker, the lawbreaker. He, however, is the creator. Behold the believers of all beliefs. Whom do they hate most? Him who breaketh up their tables of values. The breaker, the lawbreaker. He, however, is the creator. Okay, let's just stop there. I'm too sorry. Okay. Then I... Okay, this is what we forgot. Health insurance. I'm on, I'm on Medicaid right now. Because I have, I'm low income and I'm not working um, or like all those qualifications. So um, I can see like pretty much any doctor. I mean, you have to check if the doctor takes your health insurance. But um, I'm on Medicaid and Medicare right now. I have this other plan called um, Dual Complete where you get like from United Healthcare where you get like now it's like $225 a month for food and for um over-the-counter um, stuff at CVS, like if you want Tylenol or like vitamins or something. So I give that money back to my parents too. So they also could get up to $225 a month back. Um, but like uh, sometimes I don't really use it very much. I usually get takeout because my, it's my mom's kitchen. So, um, and um I mean, I don't use vitamins like that much or anything. I don't need Tylenol. Tylenol gives me a headache. <laughs> and um, I already stocked up on a lot of shampoo. <laughs> so it's really, it's not like $225 a month. Like if I, you know, anyway, um, the health insurance costs like $500 a month. So, um, <laughs> So that's six thousand dollars. So it is it is cheaper for me to live at home. <laughs> so um instead of um thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars, it would be like um closer to to twenty thousand dollars a year for me to move out. <laughs> Health insurance. <laughs> um, if you don't have health insurance and there is an emergency, you could be paying a hundred K or more. Um, 
rather than nothing. So that's a little like an investment. <laughs> More like save your butt. Um, so there you have it. <laughs> so um, I would actually need to make closer to 50k a year, which is like honestly, like I feel like for the average person in this area, it would be 60 or 70. Because I'm buying knockoff fashion. So $150 a month for clothing is like nothing. Literally nothing. Um, that's how much people spend on like one item. And I would buy like 10 or 20 items with it. So, um, <laughs> or at least like 5 to 10. <laughs> like this hat was like a few dollars. Like, it, <laughs> But it's knockoff fashion so it looks like really good. I mean, it's like English, but like, because it's from a knockoff company. <laughs> but like this, this was like probably $10. Like at the Gap, it would be like $45. This was like probably like $8, $10. It would be like, yeah, $35, $40. This t-shirt was like $5, $6 maybe. That would be like twenty to twenty five dollars, and I have some like more like my pea coat was like twenty dollars, and it's like nice and warm. That would be like two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars. So for the price of like one winter coat, I can get like ten things, like a month. So so like and also haircuts, <laughs> haircuts. How much are haircuts? I would have to get a haircut for those looks and probably maybe not though. Let's not factor things because I wouldn't cut my. But haircut in like this area can be like sixty, seventy dollars. You need like one a month. So that could be what what's that like eight thousand dollars a year? No. Eight hundred dollars a year? <laughs> I'm not good at mental math. I'm like pretty I can do calculus. Or I could do calculus. And I took um intermediate honors intermediate logic. Or just intermediate logic at uh, Brain Community College. So I'm a little bit of something like a math whiz. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Kinda. I took honors calculus in high school. But they called it SPED calculus, like special education calculus, because it wasn't AP calculus. <laughs> that was a fun class. <laughs> uh, our math teacher in that class. Uh, I won't name names. I'm just going to say, like, a math teacher. The more you know, the funnier it is. Um, but he would sing a lot in class. And I feel like that's how I, I got, like, I'm kind of knocking him off in, like, a lot of my comics. You could call it Grace, I guess. Um, but, like, um, <laughs> it would be like, he'd be like, now you carry the two. And he goes, carry me. Uh, what's this going to carry me? Carry me home tonight? Or something. You know, you know what song I'm talking about? I can't, I can't sing right now. <laughs> or, you know, everything he did would be like, like, you gotta cross this off. And they have a song about, like, crossing a river or something. <laughs> and we, I don't know, I don't know if we thought it was cool or not, but now I think it's really cool. So I do it all the time. It's like the cornerstone of my comedy, kind of. <laughs> So there you have it. I feel like those numbers worked out pretty well. They worked out pretty well. Cost, so what what percentage more does it cost for my parents for me to live at home? Okay. So um, it's instead of oh we did it with SSDI too right. No, we didn't. Okay, that worked out. Okay, so um, thirteen. We we round up to fourteen hundred. Um, to fifty thousand. 